Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Johnny Trumbukas. Welcome back to the shop. This week we're going over how to make this Asanoha Kumiko pattern. Kumiko is an ancient Japanese tradition and this pattern is definitely the most popular. This video breaks down the four main components of this pattern, so let's get right to it. The four main parts that make up the Asanoha pattern are the grid, diagonals, these pieces that make up these diamonds, and short diagonals. Let's start in the beginning with the grid. Japanese woodworking is mostly done with soft wood, and kumiko is no exception. Here I'm using basswood, which is a great starting point to learn kumiko. Its soft fibers and forgiving nature allow you to work it quite easily, and it's pretty easy on your tools too. The stock I'm using is 1 8 by half an inch, and what you've seen me do so far is rough cut the six pieces to just over six inches long and trim them to exactly six inches using my table saw, crosscut sled, and a stop block. The next thing to do is cut the half lap joints that will tie this grid together. I start by laying out where I need to make these cuts. One will go directly in the center of these pieces and another on either side of the strips half an inch from the edge. I mark out the width of the half laps which are one eighth of an inch wide so I can line up those marks with the table saw blade and adjust my stop block accordingly. Since we're using half inch wide strips, our blade needs to be sticking up exactly a quarter of an inch to cut halfway through the material. I start slightly lower than that, testing the fit, and slightly raising the blade until I get a perfect fit. Now we can assemble the grid. I roughly measure out the length needed for these four diagonal pieces and cut them slightly oversized so there's plenty of material to work with. Now we can take out our Kumiko jigs and cut the 45 degree angles needed on the ends of these pieces. If you'd like to see how I made these jigs, there's a link at the end of this video and also in the description. There you'll also find a link to where you can buy these jigs if you didn't want to make them yourself. Each end of these pieces gets a 45 degree cut, resulting in a 90 degree point. We sneak up on these cuts, adjusting our jigs accordingly, until we achieve the perfect fit in our grid. There are 16 pieces that make up this section, and these are the pieces that intimidate me the most. But with a firm understanding and a bit of patience, we can get them to fit in perfectly. We start with our 67 and a half degree jig, cutting a point on one end of each piece. This is the end that will fit in the corner we just created between our diagonal pieces and the grid. The opposite end of these pieces gets 22 and a half degree cut. Cutting these pieces to length is where patience is required. It's very easy to overshoot, so take your time and take small cuts. Dry fit two of these pieces in place, and ideally you should have no gap between the 22.5 degree bevels and the 67.5 degree corners. There's still one more cut needed on these pieces, and for that we need to move our stop block on our 22.5 degree jig in just the smallest amount, a couple thousandths of an inch. Here we want to remove two thirds of the pointy end of the bevel that we just created to make an asymmetric point. This might take some trial and error since it's very easy to overshoot. So it's good to take small passes and sneak up on the fit. It's also not a bad idea to have some extra pieces on hand. 
These two pieces fit into place with the one third, the smaller section of the asymmetric bevels, meeting each other. These small diagonal pieces are cut just like the larger ones in step two. Rough cut your pieces to length and using your 45 degree jig, cut a point on each end of these pieces. Adjust the stop lock on your jig accordingly to get them to the proper length and achieve a nice snug fit. With that, the pattern is completed. At this point, I like to take everything apart and use a toothpick to add a small dab of wood glue on each piece just to secure it in place. The final thing to do is sand the face of the pattern as there might be some uneven joints. I start with 220 grit wrapped around a wooden block and move up through the grits. You can take this as high as you'd like. Just make sure you do both sides. And with that, it's all done. I hope this gave you a bit of insight on how Kumiko patterns are made and inspired you to try it out yourself. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.